Episode 3, Prototype Android Setup and the first level. First thing I did when designing the game is set up the basics of uploading your game from Unreal Engine to Google Play Store. That was clicking on Edit Platforms Android Config Project for Android platforms and Config for Google Play Store services. Then take the first OBB files and use external files. I've done this three times now, so I kind of know one, well, three official times, I've done about hundreds of times in total. So I know exactly what I'm talking about. The next thing I did was just set up the right door of the third person character. Now I'm not gonna be using exactly the third person character. I'm gonna be using a more top-down character to simulate the type of gameplay to jump point for. But for now, let me just explain this gameplay through the third person characters. It's easier to control and do what level design slash gameplay design that you would want to do in the game. So anyways, I set up the right door simply by clicking on the third person character input action right door and simulate physics among other things. You see all those other things in the background as I'm rambling on. Now let's move on to the first level, more accurately the level design. Stick with me here. So level design, as you know, plays a crucial role in fostering player immersion. So if the immersion refers to the player's ability to feel absorbed and engaged in the game world, a well-designed level can create a seamless and immersive experience by crafting detailed and believable environments, correct? Correct. From large forest to dystopian cities, level design sets the stage for players to suspend their disbelief and become engrossed in the game's narrative and atmosphere. A carefully constructed level can transport players to a different world, making them feel like an active participant of the game universe. Now, from the two videos, several videos now, but the two videos that I've been involved in Unreal Engine, which is this video and the previous video. In the previous videos are mostly focused on grey boxing. In this video, I strangely am focusing on the gameplay as aspects of the game, meaning that being able to dodge, being able to ragdoll, spinning blades, all these things which do not involve in level design in a way, mm. but it does. Stick with me here. So level design is such a huge umbrella term. It's hard to actually just do a video on just simply designing the level. You can just do a video on designing level, don't get me wrong, but that's a boring video. That's a video for later on when I'm just doing little step by step on all the assets that I've gathered together in order to create the level. I've done this a lot of times. I've done this for Paradox Lullaby, I've done this for Cyber Chase, and now I'm gonna be doing this for this game. So that bit of the game is something that's gathered more so near the end of the game once everything, once the mechanics and everything, and the great boxing and everything comes together to create a flow of motion on the game. But because of this, level design contributes to gameplay variety and pacing. A game with a repetitive and monopolous levels can quickly lose the player's interest. Now what do I mean by this? So this goes back to my great boxing. The reason I was great boxing several different levels was so I know how to do a step-by-step -step guide on how to make each level and make each level different enough so then players can become more immersed and more interested in the game but i had to be careful with this as well because on the other hand a diverse and well designed uh, series of levels keeps the players engaged and excited anyways even if it's the same level for example minecraft Minecraft is the exact same level over and over again, but it keeps the players engaged and excited maybe because it generates a new seat every single time, but it's the same same level. There's not really much difference in that. It just creates new challenges and simulates a different environment. And that's what I basically do with each level of this game. I create new challenges and simulate a different environment. That allows the player to just be completely immersed. Now, when designing a level, you have the opportunity to introduce new mechanics, introduce unique obstacles, and vary the difficulty curve to ensure that players remain captivated throughout the game. When making this, you have to be careful balancing the complexity and progression of levels. Now, going back to the game, going back to the game which I'm making right now, why I'm doing it in a very old structure, as you see, I'm creating some gameplay mechanics in like this third person mode. Everything kind of falls together and I'm trying to visually show you what the process is through my brain to the screen. I don't design levels as in from gate boxing, great boxing, sorry. I'm I'm instantly creating the assets and then I'm making the game. What I do is I create box and then I create 
gameplay mechanics and then I see how the gameplay mechanics can match into the great boxing and then I put two and two together and that creates the level. So it's a very long, drawn out, boring process, which, which honestly isn't that bad. But, so let's go back to level design. So level design additionally contributes to gameplay's visual aspects and appeal. The placements of objects, the choice of lighting and the overall composition of a level can significantly impact the gameplay's visual presentation. Cyber Chase, for example, extremely beautifully made game. I don't know, maybe I'm getting a bit big at it, but have you seen the game? It's aesthetically pleasing. That's how I like all my games to be like. Difficult, but aesthetically pleasing. It, it enhances the player's enjoyment, I believe and helps create a memorable and immersive experience known as Blade uh, Cyber Chase. Can actually forget Cyber Chase, even though it's not a very long game, it's still able to immerse and become memorable to a player. Now me, I don't have the privilege of working with artists or art directors. That's why obviously I explained before that in this game, I'll be using a lot of AI for a lot of different parts of the game in order to create the game in the way that I would like it to be created because AI is a great thing if you know how to use it not as a source of making games but as something that can help you out but anyways in conclusion level design is a vital component of the game development that greatly influences the player's experience that was obvious the immersion and overall enjoyment from creating immersive environments to providing gameplay variety and pacing. Level designers, or just designing levels in general, you have the power to shape the player's journey throughout the game in the most humble way <laughs> I can put it. By carefully considering the placement of objects, obstacles, and challenges, you as a level designer, you as just a solo indie developer that's doing the level design can create a memorable and engaging experience that keeps the players captivated from start to finish. Speaking of all of this, this this is somehow my longest video so far. This is my third episode and I am grinding. I am, I am actually grinding through these videos. And I want to show you everything that goes through my mind when making a game, which means this, this idea of being very careful about what goes into the game, how it looks, what levels we'll be able to 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 play along with the character, what what I think players will be interested in. So I prototype and prototype and prototype and set up and then create multiple first, second, third, fourth levels until I come up with a nice concise idea of what I wish. Now usually I'll spend this out of actual months, but in order to, to get these videos out in time i need to compress this in a very dangerously short amount of time which means there's no sleep involved but i'm just rambling on i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you enjoyed the background of me designing uh, simply just a character ragdolling on a spinning blade but trust me it will make sense as these videos progress you see the levels becoming more alive than artwork and everything becoming more well there but anyways, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share the video. Go download Paradox Lullaby and Cyber Chase. And thank you very much for continuing to watch these videos. It's really, it's really something that pushes me forward. Peace.